Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Modeling Minecraft. Um, so for a while now, a lot of you have been asking for a tutorial on the animated block models, like these animals here, um, and I will get to that. But first of all, I want to sort of do a video on two things. So first of all, textures, and then animated textures and everything to do with that, like animation properties and everything. Um, hello, giraffe. Um, so I was going to do them both in the same video, but after a sort of brief conversation with Vanilla Burp the other day, um, I realized that there's a bit more to texturing than is often sort of thought of. Um, so I'm going to do a really detailed video on texturing and then another video on animation and then finally the animated block models. Um, so that's the sort of plan um, for this, for these sort of episodes now. Um, and by the way, you should check out um, some of Vanilla Burp's more recent videos. Um, she's been using resource packs to make really detailed um, sort of bedrooms and a gaming room. Um, and this is her sort of first sort of attempt at um, block modeling. But I think she did an amazing job and they look really awesome. So definitely check those out. Okay, so now on to actually texturing. So to start with, you're going to need a program to make the textures in. Um, now, I personally use a program called GIMP. Um, it's free. I'll leave a link to the download in the description. Um, but you can use sort of any software you like, really. Um, Photoshop, um, Paint.net works as well, and that's also free. Um, the one thing is that don't, don't use Microsoft Paint because that doesn't support transparency. Um, so you're going to have a bad time if you use that. Um, but GIMP is relatively simple um, and easy to use. Um, I'll quickly sort of demonstrate a few sort of features of it, um, just so you get a bit familiar with it if you're going to use GIMP. Um, but this thing here is called the Toolbox. Now, if you have it closed for some reason, or you close it and just want to start fresh, you can go to Windows, New Toolbox, and that will bring up all the different tools um, that are available in GIMP. Um, and then you can have sort of dockable dialogues. Um, so I generally just have two, the tool options, and also the layers, which shows what um, layer you're working on. You can drag those both onto the toolbox like that. Um, so then you have sort of the tool options here and the layers tab here um, and you can change things like the opacity of everything and um, change the size. I'm going to resize this slightly. There we go. Resize the um, brushes and everything like that. Um, the main sort of three tools you'll be using is the pencil, uh, paintbrush and the uh, eraser. So. The pencil is very simple, it's just a solid solid line. Um, generally you want size to be you know smallish um, if you're working with small textures. Um, the paintbrush has a sort of you know s stroke to it, um, softer edges. And with the erase tool, you need to turn hard edge on if you're going to be working on a sort of pixel scale the pixel scale. Um, because that erases the whole pixel at a time rather than just sort of erasing a bit of it and leaving some transparency. Um, and you can also change the color with the sort of color wheel here. Um, it's, it's just all very simple to use, so I won't go on too much about that. Um, but about textures now. So the sort of default Minecraft textures are 16 pixels by 16 pixels. Um, and you can actually make the textures larger than this, um, sometimes up to, you know, 1024 by 1024. Um, but the one thing I will say if, is if you're going to make textures that are bigger than the default is that you keep them square and generally in um, multiples of 16. So 16 or 32 or 64, 128, 256, things like that. Um, and the reason for that is that I've sort of talked about UVs before, I think. Um, if you're working on a model and you have maybe an element that's sort of a thin rectangle um, and you want to apply this texture 
that's sort of highlighted here onto that model it's a lot easier um, if you're working with multiples of 16 because the sort of UV um, sort of numbers only go from 0 to 16 um, so it's a lot easier if you can work with sort of 3.5 or 3.25 rather than some really obscure number um, and you also want to output the image file as a PNG file um, any other file won't work um, but let's quickly just demonstrate using um, stone here as an example um, we'll just sort of scribble on this here um, like that and we're going to export it so control E to export or you can just go to file export as um, and we want to go to dot minecraft resource packs my resource pack assets minecraft textures blocks um, and then we're saving it as stone.png to overwrite the existing stone texture now obviously you can change this to anything you want you can call it like red block for example um, obviously there is no block that's called red block um, but you can open that texture using um, a model for example and you can actually put them anywhere within the textures folder so you can have maybe an extra folder here um, called models or something like that I generally just place it all in blocks because I'm sort of more lazy but um, do what you are comfortable with really um, so we're going to replace that um, generally just leave all of this the same export make sure it's exported as a PNG um, and then we're going to go into Minecraft and see the new texture Okay, so we are in Minecraft now. Um, I don't know why there's a skeleton horse there. Um, oh, I know why, because <laughs> that's kind of funny. These are actually the animal models. Okay, anyway. Um, so if we go ahead and press F3 and T to reload textures, um, a thing I forgot to mention, make sure the... Um, resource pack is as a folder instead of a zip file because if it's a, as a zip file you might not be able to um, sort of edit the changes as easily um, so you can see that works we've now got um, these stone blocks replaced as these really sort of ugly looking um, red blocks um, but if you're going to sort of just make a resource pack um, like this then one thing that you do need to s sort of think about is how the blocks will sort of tile together um, so it's generally best to make sort of subtle differences in the texture maybe like like sand you know just single sort of pixel areas where it's different um, you know keep things sort of small and subtle rather than things like this this doesn't look this doesn't tile very well um, as you can obviously see um, but we're not really interested in sort of making a resource pack as such we're interested in using um, textures for models um, but you know blocks are essentially models they have their own model file so I'm just using it as a sort of example okay now I'm going to do something a little bit different we are actually going to let's just delete all this uh, like that uh, we're actually going to sort of separate this image into different sort of sections um, because I want to sort of talk about something else um, which is transparency um, so there's sort of three different types of I guess uh, transparency um, that you can have you can have fully opaque um, which is like this it's just a solid pixel color um, or you can have entirely transparent which is I should have done that which is all of this area here you know nothing's there um, no color is shown or you can have like partial transparency so I'm actually going to set this as we'll say around 75% um, and I'm going to color in these pixels here um, so this is actually sort of see-through but it still has um, some color to it um, and then I'm going to change this down to 25% color this one so you can see this is a lot more faint um, the reason I'm talking about this is that it is interesting to see how transparency um, works in the different types of blocks I should have probably moved these over one but oh well it doesn't matter too much um, so we're gonna save this as stone we're also going to save it as uh, 
Is it oak? It's not giving me the suggestions. Hold on. Let's try and find it. Oak. Well, it must be called leaves. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're going to save it as leaves oak. Replace. This is going to look weird. Um, we're also going to save it as is what's the glass called again? Is it just glass colored? You can see it really helps to have a sort of default resource pack just so you can look up things. Um, yeah, okay, we'll save it as glass. We'll do one as glass PNG and then one as um, glass red dot PNG. Um, and I think that's all of them. That'll do for now. Um, so let's go back into Minecraft and sort of take a look at how the different transparencies um, work in Minecraft with the different blocks. Okay, so I'm back in Minecraft now and these are the textures um, that we saved. We have stone, oak leaves, glass and red stained glass. And remember they were all the same um, actual texture that we saved it as, but the different blocks have a different way of sort of interpreting that texture. And it's actually very interesting uh, to actually see the behavior shown here. Um, so we'll start with stone. Now remember this this um, section here was fully opaque, so obviously that's still fully opaque. Um, then we have the 75% um, transparency, or opacity rather, um, and that's fully opaque as well and the 25% opacity and that's fully opaque as well. So any partial transparency will be fully opaque, um, no matter what, with most solid blocks um, that take up you know, an entire hitbox and um, everything like that. So solid blocks, um, you know, uh, any, any opacity at all um, will be fully um, opaque. Um, but it, any transparency, like fully transparent um, parts of the model, um, will be fully trans. Uh, will they usually turn black? If this was to be a proper model, it would be black um, in this section where it's stone. But it's actually sort of defaulting back to the default resource pack um, to actually show the stone through it. So that's actually an interesting behavior that I didn't actually. I've never actually done this test before, so it's interesting to see that that happens. Um, but yeah, so any sort of transparency, if you had a model and you had some custom textures, any transparency on a solid block would be displayed as um, black. Um, and then next up we have the oak leaves and the glass. Um, and these actually display in a similar sort of way, um, which is what I was hoping for. You can see that the oak leaves are slightly darker than the glass. Um, and that's just because the um, leaves have a sort of color gradient applied on top of them, um, depending on the biome. So that's all that that is. Um, other than that, it works in the same way. Um, you can actually edit the color gradient, which brings a lot of very funky different effects. You can turn grass purple and everything like that. Um, but they're mostly the same. So you can see that the um, fully opaque is still opaque. The 75% let me just take the rain off. Um, come on, go away. I'm in the middle of the savannah. Um, so you can see that the fully opaque remains fully opaque. The 75% remains fully opaque, but then the 25% uh, um, opacity and the transparency um, is fully transparent. Um, so even if you have a sort of partial transparency, I believe it's under 50%. So as long as it's um, below 50% opacity, it will be completely um, see-through. Um, and that's both for glass and oak leaves. Um, and then we get to the sort of special case, um, which is the stained glass. Um, and these are actually the sort of the only sort of blocks that actually use the proper texture no matter what. Um, so, you know, they'll have the uh, fully opaque uh, and then the partially opaque. Um, and then you can actually see that the color is applied on top of them as well. 
Um, and that's, you know, that's, they're the only sort of blocks that actually take this effect in the real world. One thing that you might not have noticed, however, is that you can see in my hand, they all display like the red stained glass. Um, and that's the thing that is very important when you're making models, because although solid blocks don't really support transparency very well, um, entities and items do. So for example, if I go ahead and summon an armor stand in here and do equipment, um, we'll do uh, ID stone, you can see that the entity actually does have um, the sort of opacity, partial transparency um, on it as well. Um, the sort of interesting thing about this behavior though is that transparency doesn't work very well with block models um, really at all. Um, so you can see I can actually see through I didn't mean to break that. I can see through the um, stained glass over there, and I can also see through the water over here, um, as well as other things. You know, there are many different sort of um, sort of glitches with how transparency works in Minecraft. Um, and you know, sometimes this can be um, a good thing, um, but most of the time it's a bad thing. Um, so generally, be careful with what you use um, sort of translucency for. Don't sort of go overboard with it because um, I actually use stained glass to replace um, the model for the oak sieve in planetary confinement. And although it wasn't very obvious, um, there was actually some sort of glitches um, depending on what sort of direction you were facing at it um, was things like the corners, like you could see the leg over there through the actual top um, and things like that. And that's just to do with the way that the um, elements are actually rendered. They're sort of rendered in the order um, that you make them. I'll try and do a full sort of video on transparency um, with models um, another time after I've done this, because um, it is very interesting to see the way that um, the behavior changes. Um, so things like items, um, you can see if I drop them now, they all have the same sort of texture, um, other than the uh, oak leaves, obviously, because it has the color gradient on it. So that's all I really wanted to talk about in terms of textures. Um, it was a slightly longer video for this, because um, there was a lot to explain. Um, but as a sort of bonus for you guys, I thought I'd actually edit the um, color map um, to show you how sort of crazy um, uh, you can get with the sort of color scheme of the foliage and things like that. Um, so you can see this image is actually 256 by 256, um, but I'm going to hit hue saturation, um, and this just allows me to edit the hue like so. Um, now obviously you can be more drastic than this, um, but let's try a sort of, let's try a sort of deep pinkish kind of color. I feel like that's going to look good. Um, and we'll hit OK and then we'll save it as foliage. And then I believe since grass is also the same image, we'll just overwrite that as well. Um, it's missing a chunk, but it should be fine. Uh, so let's overwrite both of those. And then let's go back into Minecraft. Okay, I also d quickly deleted the um, red textures that we made earlier, so we'll have a fresh sort of resource pack. Um, so I'm going to press F3 and T at the same time now, um, wait for it to reload, and hopefully it should look very bizarre. Not responding, it has to load. Oh, there we go. <laughs> So you can see by just changing one thing, we've actually changed the entire color map for all of the foliage um, in Minecraft. And this is for things like the grass um, as well. Um, and I actually want to do a sort of episode just on the grass as well, because that has a special sort of property called tint, um, which is kind of very sort of fun to play around with. Um, 
I wish this all wasn't Savannah. I think I just generated the Savannah world. Okay, um, this would be a lot more interesting on a normal world. Um, but I'm going to leave this episode there. Um, so I hope that kind of explained a bit about textures and how the, the sort of transparency of things changes depending on whether it's a block or entity and things like that. Um, if it didn't, then maybe I'll make a part two of this and try try and do that again. Um, but the next video will be the animated textures, and then the video after that will be the animated block models. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this episode of Modeling Minecraft, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now. <laughs>